Um, we're reporting here on our Erasmus project called Beyond Text, and it's a project that promotes practical wisdom through arts-based methods. Um, there's four of us have uh, been working on this. Two, uh, Tatiana and Anna, are uh, just participants today, and Alan Owens will be following on from me later on in this presentation. There's been three massive crises in the last two decades, and these have demonstrated in society a catastrophic lack of practical wisdom. Universities, unfortunately, collectively have failed to prevent this. After the first two crises, Miguel Chris wrote this book where he highlighted the failures of rationality uh, and argued we need to weave together the sciences with the arts and humanities. And this is a very powerful uh, book which we would strongly recommend. Now, this idea of practical wisdom was developed by Aristotle. He was looking at the elite. What UNESCO highlighted 50 years ago was that really, now we're democracies, everyone needs to develop practical wisdom. And central to our critique is that universities love disciplines. Unfortunately, it's disciplines that have played, this focus on disciplines uh, is what played a role in these crises. We argue for in discipline a breakage or rupture where we need to disrupt the incompleteness of universities based on disciplines. Uh, our, our project has set out to uh, develop five dimensions which go against the DNA, as it were, of the everyday practice of universities. And so we're making really a direct attack on the, on the conventional university. And these are the five dimensions. And in particular, we are arguing that universities need to focus on adults for lifelong learning and also to be able to help individuals live and work collectively. Alan? Thanks, Pat. So Beyond Tax was an indisciplinary international project. And it was an opportunity to put this theory into practice over a three year period. And we attempted to address all five elements in the framework as we did this. In terms of the focus that we're using in this, there was a major emphasis on reflection. And in this slide, you can see individual reflections have been used to make up the whole for the collective to reflect back on. So the major themes emerging in this case, in a full day learning event in Barcelona, are made visible through graphics. In this image, playful learning is foregrounded, and that is foregrounded in our understanding of pedagogy. And in this sequence, we see a physicist with a specialism in helium, working with an artist, stepping into a dramaturgical frame to understand their own learning. This is a very ordinary moment, but it's subverted in this image by an overlay. If you look there, you have an accountant, an engineer, an educator, and an actor, and they're encountering each other. It's just one moment in indisciplinary movement. Work was mainly done face to face in terms of audience. The events and experiences of the participants were taken back, in this case, to a refugee camp in Palestine and were used in those contexts. They were run by the participants with very little difficulty. Academics were learners and they were also teachers. In this example, zines are being used. Uh, a hierarchy that we usually expect to see is not in play. There was a deliberately pronounced shift between learner and teacher throughout. So Beyond Text aimed to be profoundly democratic. This was and continues to be at a time when many of our democracies around the world parted company with practical wisdom. 
practical wisdom that these democracies depend on. We succeeded to various degrees with four of the five elements of the framework, but much less so with the fifth, in the sense that we were primarily synchronous. We acknowledge and realize that this further exploration would require another project. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Um, always takes me a second to unmute myself. Um, so now we're in for um, round three, um, reaching the 99%. I see you're ready to go. I will mute myself and start your presentation and then um, the 20 second intervals will start. So I'm opening a poll now, which asks, which type of online teacher are you? Are you an early adopter, an expert, who has done a lot of online teaching, if you are a teacher, that's of course a prerequisite. If you're an advanced basic user who uses online teaching, who can do it, but is not an early adopter, is not completely perfect and experienced. Or if you are a novice, a beginner who maybe even only began online teaching during the COVID-19 and maybe wouldn't have done that when things, if things hadn't happened like they did. I'm not sure whether you can see the results. Oh yeah, they are shared. So that's great. Then we can see that we are quite a mixed group. That's really interesting and really nice to see that there are some experts here, but also some people who think they are more beginners. And as you can, or as you will see, hopefully when our slides come up, is that we had this experience ourselves at our university, the University of Graz, where we found that there is a group of experts, of course, there are people who are very good, very informed, but there's also this group of people who are not quite experienced with online teaching and who, re who need really basic information and basic help that we also need to provide. And we cannot just think of innovation and always think of the newest thing and the best thing, but we also have to get the people where they are. So then let's jump in and let me welcome you to our talk called Reaching the 99% from Overnight Remote Teaching to Transforming Higher Ed Learning. And what we mean by that, I already told you, is that during the coronavirus lockdown, many universities had to change their teaching and that often happened overnight. And we, Nadine Linsinger and Katharina Hauser, work at the University of Graz as online teaching and instructional design specialists so it was our job to do these things. And today we want to share how we think that universities online teaching must be and can be transformed sustainably from these overnight experiences. This would have been our poll, but as we already did that, maybe Katarina, we can skip these two um, slides and also skip this one. Thank you for voting. Now I can thank you and say that we like to think of online teaching as a mountain where one percent of people is at the top who already do online teaching who adopt innovations quickly and are eager to learn more and this is the group that often receives lots of support from universities innovation centers like our center for digital teaching and learning at our university and we catered very much to this group however we now found you just skipped the slide there was one with um, thanks a lot we now found that the 99% are standing at the bottom of the mountain who have little experience or no experience and no one's coming down to get them. So we are up there and many people are down there and we need now to take a step back to come down the mountain again and tell them the fundamentals of online teaching. So our key finding of the COVID period was that we need to refocus on the needs of the 99% of teachers and my colleague Katharina Hauser will now tell you how we did that. Thank you, Nadine. So uh, what happened, or we found out about the needs of the different people before through those calls for help we received from teachers. So people were calling us, a lot more people asking for basic help. So for example, how to upload material to our uh, online platform. And so what we did was to 
diversify our support models and we came up with new models that we focused on providing uh, written instructions for how to teach online, uh, which also included um, pedagogical tips and how to teach online in a pedagogical unique way. And then over the summer, we came up uh, with a whole new format called Digitalis and Future for Digital Tuesday, which is the future. So this is the first part, our digital course, which is a virtual office hour, which takes place weekly. And then we have our digital which is a video format where um, we interview teachers from our university. Some of them are new to online teaching, some of them are already experts, but what they all have in common is great ideas for online teaching, which we'd like to share with our whole staff. And then we have the third part, which is digital tips. Those are short videos where um, we show teachers how to become fit for our uh, online learning management system or how to hold a video conference that supports learning. And in addition to this format, we also offer webinars and tutorials on a regular basis. And of course, they are available for individual consultations um, if they are needed uh, only virtually at the moment because of the situation. And with these uh, support models, we hope to help more and more our teachers to climb this virtual mountain of online teaching. And we also hope that you today uh, to, to take away some of our ideas to help you climb this mountain or um, to help others climb this mountain. So thank you very much and we wish you a great semester.